Hi, you guys. So this is problem number 18 from chapter 8. And um, we have a parallel RLC circuit that has two switching, uh, synchronized switches. So first we have, let's talk about the circuit. We have a 15 volt in series with a 1 ohm resistor. We have a capacitor, which is 1 micro. Yeah. And that is, in par that is attached to a switch. And the switch is at this point to the, uh, at point A. And then when time starts, or the switching goes to place B, right here. And there we have a 100 ohm resistor. And in parallel with that is a switched 62.5 Henry inductor. And um, the inductor starts here at point D and goes, is synchronized with this switch to go to C when we start um, our circuit. And here we have a 60 million current source. And um, that's in parallel with a 500 ohm resistor. So the steps for solving this circuit is uh, first, since this is a step response circuit, and we're looking, um, there is a sudden change in voltage, or um, there's a sudden change in voltage or current source and, and applied energy or taking away of energy. And so we're going to be looking at this uh, step response. So we have to take a look at the condition at time zero and then the condition as time as the circuit reaches its um, steady state. Those are the two conditions. And then next, after we do that, and we have a better feel and better understanding of what's happening, we're going to look at the damping, um, which means looking at alpha and omega naught, because, of course, that tells us what type of response we're looking at. Are we looking at an overdamped response, a critically damped response, or an underdamped response? So, and once we know that, then we're going to solve, um, we have all the set of equations that we need for um, to, uh, to solve for the general equation of the voltage. And that voltage is going to be the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor. OK, so let's get started. Oh, at this point, you should pause the video, try it on your own, and then only start the video when you get stuck. But here is where you go. So the circuit at time 0 looks like this. We have the switch over here, 15 volts. here, right, we have this resistor out here, and the switch is, it's not tied to the switch because the switch is over here, 60 million ohms, I should use a lower case, otherwise that makes it mega, mega amp. Okay, so right now, of course, the initial voltage draw, we need that for the step response. What is it? Think about it. It has no connection to anything. It has to be zero. So we have that, and we need that for our step response equation. So we're going to park all the information that we, we find here. V0 zero at zero times zero is equal to zero volts. No connection. But we do have stored energy here, right? So, because we have uh, the capacitor is um, in, or in series with this, it's just going to pick up the same voltage drops. It's getting charged up to 15 volts, in other words. And over here, we have, I forgot to draw in the inductor, but it doesn't matter because the inductor is a short right there. And we have a 60 milliamp um, current source just going in a loop like that. So, it's just like, Chilling out and going in a loop, and this uh, if this here, this 500 ohm resistor actually doesn't add or take away to anything from our analysis, but it might be there to protect something downstream from the current source, some kind of. Uh, but uh, anyways, but it doesn't give you uh, anything useful in regards to finding this general equation. So that's at time zero. So what happens after we do the switching? 
after we do the switching and the response and the, and the circuit reaches a steady state. Well, we have the switch over here, so this part of the circuit completely goes away. There's no more connection there. There's just this cap, right? And it is in parallel with this, um, this resistor here. The inductor is here. And it has no connection to that ideal current source. There's no connection to the ideal current source. There's no connection to the 15 volt, um, the 15 volt ideal voltage source. So this again is zero, and we have no current because all the energy that had been stored in time zero, we have that 60 milliamp going in here, charging up the inductor. It has some value, some stored energy, um, and over here we have 15 volts of stored energy. Once we switch, right? Once we do the switching, then that there is no more connection to any ideal voltage source, so the current will run out. The, the energy in the inductor will run out, and the voltage in the capacitor, the stored energy in the capacitor, will die off too. So you'll have final final current of zero, final voltage of zero. Okay, um, now. Now, now that we have an understanding of what is happening, so that's the final condition, and this is the, now before we reach the time of infinity, we gotta take a look at um, damping to know what kind of, kind of um, current we're looking at. Okay, so initially, before we reach the, the point where, the, before we reach the, the steady state, there's an, a response, and what do we have? We have the current going like this, so we have 62.5 milliamps, and we also have 15 volts here. This is in parallel with this, so this is also 15 volts. Okay, we'll need that information pretty soon, but before we, we use that information, let's find out what type of response we're looking at. So we're going to take a do step two, which is the damping. Yeah, alpha is equal to one over two RC. That is one over two times 100. And C is one micro. When you put that into your calculator, you should come up with an alpha value of 5,000. Okay, we need alpha, so let's put this information here. Okay, so now we need to find omega naught. That's equal to one over root LC. 62.5 times one micro. When you put that into your calculator, you should come up with a value of 4,000. So we need that information. Omega naught is equal to 4,000. So now we know that alpha is greater than omega naught. Our response is overdue. And now we know the equations that we need for solving that. Okay, so the three, um, I feel like I need to, I'm going to redraw that, so I, because I need to put that there. And I'm out of space, and we're done dealing, we're done dealing with this circuit. That circuit reduces to this analysis for the, the general equation anyways. So, let's put this up here. We're down to a parallel RLC circuit that looks like this.
So that's the circuit that we're, we're, we need to use to find the general equation. So what do you recommend we do? If you were on a test and you got here, what would you do? Well, the next thing you would do is you would say, well, I know I'm trying to, I, I know that I have an organic response, and so and I'm trying to find this voltage, so, but I don't have, um, I know that this voltage is in parallel with this voltage, so, or this, this circuit element is in parallel with this circuit element, so it has to have the same voltage drop. So if I just find this, then I found that. So that's what we'll do. Um, so the equations are V of T is equal to V final plus A1 prime E to the S1 T plus A2 prime E to the S2 T. V of zero is V final plus A1 prime plus A2 prime. DV of zero, VT is A1 prime S1 plus A2 prime S2. Okay, so we have three equations and um, Actually, we, we have two equations, two unknowns to find all this information for our general response. Someone asked me, what would the prime then? Is it a derivative? And it's not. It's uh, Nielsen and Rydell's way of differentiating the coefficients for the general equation and the step response equation. So when they use the prime, they are um, indicating that these coefficients are with the um, step response equations. So that's what that means. Okay, well, we know this one right away. Time at time zero, our voltage is 15 volts. Our final voltage is zero, so right away we have our number one equation that we need. That was easy. A1 plus A2 is equal to 15. Now this one is the more challenging one. We need to find S1 and S2. So S1, 2 is negative alpha plus minus root alpha squared minus omega naught squared. So let's find alpha root square root alpha squared minus omega naught squared. That's root 5,000 squared minus 4,000 squared. When you calculate that, you should come up with uh -huh, 3,000. So S1. So S1 is going to be negative um, 5,000 plus 3,000, which is 2,000. S2 is negative 2,000, excuse me. Negative 5,000 minus 3,000, which is negative 8,000. Okay. Now we can put that into the final equation because we have that piece and we have that piece. This is negative 2,000 T. This is negative 8,000 T volts. And we also know this piece too. That's zero. Okay. So now we have A1 a1 or negative 2,000 A1 prime um, minus 8,000 A2 prime is equal to dv dt. So here's where we need to um, realize that we can't just differentiate something we don't know. We can't solve it that way because then we have too many variables and we have too many unknowns, unknowns and not enough equations. So we have to use the identity of um, C. We have to recognize that C is equal to um, I dv dt. So, oops, uh, oops, excuse me, my bad. I C is equal to C dv dt. So dv dt, therefore, is equal to I C over C. So we know C, we need to find IC then. And we'll do that by using KCL over here. 
So KCL says that I see So by KCL at the top node, we have IC is equal to negative IR minus IL. Okay, and we know um, what IR is. IR is a V over R, and V is 15 over 100. And then minus 60 million. So when you put that into your calculator, you should come up with 90 million. Maybe it is 90. Make it 90 million. Years. So when we go over here, we say dvdt is equal to ic over c. We have dvdt that's equal to negative 90 milliamps and one microfarad. And when you do that, you that calculation you should come up with a value here of negative 90 kilovolts per second. Okay, now we have th two equations and two unknowns. And you can solve it any way you want. Um, I just put it into my simultaneous um, equation solver. And I come up with A1 prime is equal to 5, and A2 prime is equal to 10. And so we have here. The final equation for that is V naught of T is equal to 5 e to the negative 2,000 T plus 10 e, 10 e to the negative 8,000 T volts. And if you're on a test and you have time, make sure your equation makes sense. Plug it in for time zero. If it doesn't tell you that there's 15 volts at time zero, then you have some kind of error. And if you have time, you should look for that error. So at time zero, this is one, this is one, we have 10 plus five is 15, which is what we had at, which is what we said the voltage was at time zero. So, um, and that concludes this problem.